Blog Talk Radio. Good morning, folks. This is uh, Gus Fasio from Healing X Outreach. Uh, just uh, starting a little early right now because uh, there was a couple glitches with the programming, and so I just um, had to set something up really quick in an emergency. Um, so, uh, uh, so that we can continue on with the program. I uh, just want to remind everyone, uh, I know what you're thinking. How about that, uh, that, that charity that you're supposed to be supporting? How's that going, right? Well, uh, yes, it's, uh, it's our charity to two ministries out in Pakistan. One is the Holy Heavens uh, Orphan and Widow Center, uh, which we do every year, and also a new one called Agape Ministry in Toba, Texas. And, yes, we're nearly within reach of our goal. And uh, we haven't asked for much from our, our donors. We, uh, we we tried to make it as simple as possible. And, and the goal has been uh, 100 donors, dollars each, we would meet our goal of $2,600. Well, we are now two donations away from completing that task and meeting our goal. So uh, if we could just get two, uh, two of you guys to pull up 26 bucks a piece, we will be done with our charity uh, campaign for some clothes for orphans out there in, in Lahore and also the, the children in the care and keeping of Agape Ministry and Public Tech Team. So just uh, $26 apiece, we are $52 within our goal, and, uh, and we're done for this week right before Thanksgiving. So before you put in that turkey in your mouth, uh, just think about those that maybe not <laughs> don't have a turkey, <laughs> let alone let alone even a jacket to wear in the cold weather. And yes, in, in Pakistan, they do have cold weather. So I uh, just want to uh, remind everyone, uh, yes, we will be uh, having a debate today, and I'm going to be making that announcement shortly. And uh, just give me a second, and I'll pull up their uh, bios, and we can – Head the road for we can head on with the with the rest of this debate. Uh, right now, we're still uh, we're just a, a minute past the the time that we normally supposed to be on the air. So we're uh, in the process of getting there. Normally, we would just have some intro music right now, and uh, we we don't have any intro music right now because we're trying to. Uh, yeah, my, my wife was helping me out. Thank you. <laughs> Uh, we, we are trying to. We're panicking here right now, trying to get this show started. So uh, that's that's uh, what we're trying to do right now. And I'm going to go ahead and pull up the files that I had advertised because I had to delete that program to even just get this started, get the show on the road here. All righty. And uh, today's debate is an important and a very good one. It's it's between I think Ken Humphreys who has uh, written a couple of books on Jesus mythicism and, and whether Jesus was actually real or not. And we have, of course, uh, someone we're familiar with, and Catholic apologist William Albrich, and he's with the Catholic Legate. And uh, I'm just going off of memory on those two things right now. I know I had uh, gotten Mr. Humphrey data. Here it is. It's coming up right now as we speak. I think uh, Block Talk had a little glitch with the time zone change, and so that that really um, got us a little bit in some water here. Uh, let me yeah. that one. We got to delete one of these. Okay. All right. There we go. All right. So uh, those of you who are coming on to hear the debate, just let you know that. Our debates are moderated and, and, and orderly, so we have like two opening statements at seven minutes each. We normally have two five-minute rebuttals. We have six six-minute cross-exams, two seven-minute closings, and then we will take 24 minutes of questions and, and comments from the listeners, and that will be uh, you guys calling in, Mr. Humphreys and Mr. Albert here, and giving us uh, their, their questions. All right, now here is a... Uh, the, the debate files. Ken Humphreys is he's taking the mythicist viewpoint, and William Alvarez is, of course, going counter to that viewpoint. He's an author. He's uh, been the force behind the popular Jesus Myth website, which is www. 
www.jesusneverexisted.com for more than 17 years. And from 2011, the YouTube channel, his YouTube channel is youtube.com backslash Jesus Never Existed. And I think that's, uh, that's without the E-D, it's just a D. Existed. The book Jesus Never Existed was first published in 2005 and has been exported to 37 years and republished in an abridged version in India. And in 2016, uh, Mr. Humphreys was a guest speaker at the first International Jesus Myth Conference in Athens. Uh, William Albert, he's a Catholic apologist. He has a BA in theology. He's a member of the Catholic Apostolic, the Catholic Legate, and you can find out more about him at catholic-legate.com and on his YouTube channel, which is youtube.com backslash TNR. And so I think that they are both on the air now. Uh, William, if you are on, please press one so that I can see uh, your number. I think I think that's his number here. I'm not sure. Uh, let me just go ahead and refresh this page, see if I've missed anybody. So, William, if, you're, if you are on the air, please just press one. Oh, okay. You press the silver. All right. Well, let me see. Maybe it. Maybe it's. It's. It, there might be a glitch once again. Uh, William, is that you on the air? All right. Yeah, we're both here together. William. You're both here. Okay. So. Uh, yeah. I, yeah. We're right, both me. on the line. Yeah. Uh, okay. Are you both yeah, on the line? Yeah, I can confirm line, I'm on the line. <laughs> yeah, we're both here. Yeah, we had a little bit of trouble. We kept getting knocked off by the by the show. Yeah, yeah. There's some kind of there's some kind of glitch going on with the so I had to set up a whole new show. Plus we wouldn't have gone come on. It was it was scheduled for three hours later for some reason, even though the oh. setting from what I thought was correct. Yeah, it did tell us so, too that there were no shows scheduled. Yeah, yeah, it was, yeah. And then I had to re- that's why I had to reschedule and recreate all new one. The, the bio's not even on this one, but uh, I'll just edit that later on. Uh, but you guys did hear me give the introduction, right? Oh, yeah, we definitely did. Okay, great, great. So I, I just want to make sure I gave everybody that due honor. <laughs> definitely. All righty, great. All right, so then uh, uh, we can get the show on the road. Then, uh, uh, as I mentioned, we're going to have two seven-minute openings. And uh, uh, on uh, who, who takes the uh, – okay, whoever's taking the pro position – would start. Is, it, is that correct? Yeah, I will begin, and uh, Ken will be uh, will follow, and he will be closing today's debate. So yeah, since I'm going to be taking the positive, I, I'll all open. Okay, great. Right, and, uh, yeah. Uh, okay, so I can get... agree with that. Great, that'll work. <laughs> okay, great, and, and I hear you both loud and clear, so that's great. Fantastic. Okay, great. So you can go ahead and uh, begin now. Okay, let me get my timer, and I will begin now. Okay. In writing to the Manichaeans, the immovable St. Augustine said, Who says that it is a weak faith not to believe in Jesus Christ without a witness? Those things preached by the apostles were attested to by miracles. For those that would want to ascribe them to magical power, there is additional testimony. We can establish the authority of our beliefs through history, as Augustine laid that foundational truth down. All these things foretold in the scriptures, behold, they are accomplished throughout the whole world. Be moved to faith, he said. Today's debate asks the novel question, and and, and my friend Ken will disagree, but I call it novel, did Jesus Christ exist? And for those familiar with my debates, will be familiar with the three pillars of evidence in the vein of the great Aquinas that I will erect that my opponent will have to topple if they are to win this debate. Today we will present evidence from the oldest historical texts of the scriptures. We will bring forth the testimony of the earliest followers of Jesus the Christ, confining ourselves to the apostolic era. And we will hearken to the enemies of the faith as evidence that Jesus did indeed exist in an ancient hymn that predated paul we read about jesus christ who although he existed in the form of god in more faith did not regard equality with god a thing to be grasped 
but emptied himself, taking the form of a bond servant and being made in the likeness of men, being found in appearance as a man, humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. For this reason also, God highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every name. So at the name of Jesus, every knee will bow. The Carmen Christi, or the hymn to Christ, is of fundamental importance for a follower, for a Christian, because it is an, it is an ancient tradition predating Paul. The most reliable ancient scholars tell us that this hymn came from around the time of the resurrection. This would, in turn, mean that the earliest followers believed that Jesus the Christ was Lord and that he did indeed exist. Paul believed Christ was real. Paul believed Christ was born of a virgin. Paul believed Christ performed miracles. Paul believed Christ resurrected. And Paul believed Christ was our eternal and almighty God. Unfortunately for mysticists, they view the Gospels as distorted, interpolations, untrust, untrustworthy, late material, dated late. So today we will prove that we can prove Jesus Christ existed from the earliest writings attributed to Paul, before Paul. We can prove from the earliest martyrs of the faith that they believed Jesus Christ indeed existed. The apostolic fathers, those closest to the time of the apostles, were very well acquainted with the heresies of their time. They gave their life for Jesus Christ. They wrote about God and wrote about how they were willing to die for the faith. From the earliest, we see testimony about the Christ. The incredible Clement of Rome, a pillar of patristic testimony, wrote much about Christ. He wrote about the historicity of the resurrection, wrote about how the very words of Jesus Christ speak of mercy and pure love. The epistle of Barnabas tells us that we should realize the love Jesus Christ has bestowed upon us as his children. The Didache calls Christ servant on more than one occasion. Jesus Christ, the servant. Polycarp and the martyrdom of Polycarp talk about Jesus Christ so much that we would run out of time in the opening. Matthew Tate, the epistle to Diognetus, mentions the son referencing Christ at least nine times, over and over. And last, but definitely not least, Ignatius of Antioch mentions Christ several times. Speaking of Jesus as a humble servant, born of a virgin that died and rose again. Ignatius personally knew Christ. All of these sources speak of a historical figure named Jesus Christ. And then when we reach our third pillar of proof, we wholeheartedly embrace, yes we do, we wholeheartedly embrace the enemies as a testimony to the fact that this Jesus Christ we speak of indeed existed. Celsus, writing and talking about his, what his forefathers taught and knew, relays the fact that the earliest followers believed. They believed that Christ was a miracle maker, born of a virgin, and many other things from the Gospels. Now, you may be wondering, did he believe in that? No, he didn't believe. He was an enemy. Of course he didn't believe. But he goes as far as to claim that Christ invented many lies, including his virgin birth and that he lied about being God. He knew that the Jews knew this particular Jesus Christ existed. In Book 4, Chapter 14, he lamented, if God came down among men, he must undergo a change. Celsus didn't merely believe, didn't believe in the deity of Christ. Instead, he believed that he was a mere man. He believed he was a man. Pliny the Younger wrote about <clears throat> a hymn. Before dawn, they sing a hymn to Christ as to a God. Take into mind that Pliny learned about hymns that were sung to Christ as God from people that were within the faith. The famous writer Lucian of Samosata talked about the fact that the Christians, they worship a man to this day, he said. A man. He recognized Jesus was a man and existed and was worshipped. And the list can go on and on and on. Testimony to the existence of Christ in Rabbi Akiva, who bans the usage of Exodus, which referred to a person. The person the Christians referred to 
spelled out the name Jesus. Moving on to Justin, his dialogue with Trifo. I, I, we've, we're going to go into the dialogue with Trifo. If he did not exist, why does Trifo show familiarity with a person named Jesus? I submit to you, listening audience, that he did exist, does exist, will forever exist, and it's not a myth. And that is um, the end of my opening. I will now give way to the rest of my time to my friend Ken to hear his opening. Thank you, William. Thank you. Um, I must say that was a defense of an historical Jesus like none other that I'd ever heard. Um, yeah, so... <laughs> It's as far as, uh, you know, I can congratulate you on your originality, if, if nothing else. Um, it's, it doesn't surprise me that if that is the defense of an historical Jesus, that, that mysticism is a strong and growing movement, and that uh, many people now find the arguments of mythicism more convincing than any statement or testimony of faith that comes from members of the church. Um, you began with St. Augustine. Well, I, can I remind you of St. Augustine, uh, along with every other person you men mentioned along the way there, it was post the supposed date of Jesus. My first point, to keep things simple, I'll try and confine myself to three major points. My first point is there is lack of contemporaneous witnesses for Jesus, right? No one, in fact nothing, backs up the story from the time that allegedly this man existed. So in some sense, all of these, these confessions of faith, these assurances that Christ was this and Christ was that, well... You know, that, that really doesn't cut the mustard. That doesn't prove anything that somebody subsequent to the events alleges that this person existed. You know, that doesn't really count at all. You, it's almost as if you could take somebody of the 15th century or the 17th century or even up to today and say, this person is so assured of Jesus' existence, here is my evidence. What I would put to you is that we need evidence from the time of Jesus, and there is no evidence. No Roman wrote about Jesus. No Jew wrote about Jesus. No Christian actually wrote about Jesus during his lifetime. There is a void there. What we have is evidence of myth-making from a later time, and that that evidence, as it were, takes many forms of, of, of assurances that this is foretold and this is, this is a fulfillment of prophecy and all kinds of other spurious arguments. But the fact is, there is nothing that would convince any person looking for evidence that there was such a man. Now, there is a story. We know there is a story. It's told to every child in the Western world from, from a very young age. You know, it's a very familiar story. We all know that story. We all know its claims and virgin births and walking on water. In fact, a whole body of nonsensical or certainly uh, spurious arguments from a, a, a non-factual basis. You know, so we had the story, and what does it, what does it, what does it, what do we learn when we look at that story? We realise that it was a story, like many others, that has developed over time. The story has been embellished and developed and added to in so many different ways, and that is that is the point. We are not talking of history; we are talking of or, or, or revealed truth. We are talking of story making or myth making you know if we just begin with the mark's gospel he, he writes a very simple story he has no uh, story of the birth he, he has actually no real story of the of, of the resurrection these are taken by later writers like 
for example, Matthew, and they are developed and added to and enhanced. And where something isn't quite right, Matthew and Luke and so on, they change the original story. So this is this is not a a, a, a evidence that would mount, uh, amount to history. It's 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 a it's a theological trajectory of development. And why? Because they are attempting to build a faith. But it's not a faith based on a real visitor from God, you know, a real son of God. It's based on a, a projection and a hope. And, and then the, the story becomes believed in and, and taken further. And the third point I'd put to you, that is we can see how and why Christianity developed in the way it did, because by looking at the milieu in which the store of the region and 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 from which um, the, the, these towers were derived. We know that so much of this story is rehashed of material which appeared in the Old Testament, and it's given a new pertinency and a, and a new relevance and, and attached to this invented God called Jesus Christ. We know that similar religions in the field before Christianity, had many similar claims, many similar practices, and that Jesus, Christianity is merely the new boy on the block, which had the advantage of being endorsed by the Roman power, the Roman Empire, and therefore it, its story was the one that became official, and hence um, it's the one known to us today, and the others were persecuted out of existence so that we could all bend the knee towards Christ. But I'm sorry, but to me, there is no evidence of, of factual basis at all, whether uh, of the maximal Jesus that, that believing Catholics like to put forward, or even the minimalist Jesus that sometimes uh, other apologists would, would have put, put forward. So... No, I'm sorry, there is no Jesus uh, of history. There is only a myth. Thank you. Oh, thank you. That's uh, both of the opening statements were well within their, their uh, time limits. <clears throat> okay, now we have um, two five-minute rebuttals. And uh, just a refresher for everyone, uh, because I didn't get to um, introduce anyone. This is a debate ring right here. So... Um, as you, as, as you hear the rest, there's no, no need to panic. Just go ahead and finish your line of thought, and, uh, and, and we'll make up for the time. Just, uh, just that we'll give you an awareness that you are exceeding your time limit. That's all. So um, we can begin with our five-minute rebuttals, and William, you're next. Fantastic. Thank you for that, Kent. Um, I want to go into the uh, – um, responding right away to what Ken said, and he said that Augustine and every other person uh, that I brought up was uh, post um, the timeline of Christ. But that wasn't the point of bringing Augustine up in the opening. The point was to show that even in the era of Augustine, the pillars of the faith knew Christ existed, and and even the enemies knew he existed. If if uh, my friend Ken would have listened a little clearer, he would have noticed that Augustine was uh, talking to uh, a group of enemies of the faith, and even they knew the history of the Christ. Uh, we're told that all of these confessions don't cut the mustard. Somebody alleged he existed, we're told. Uh, unfortunately for Ken, we have the scriptures. We have the early father, followers and the enemies. The, these aren't nobodies. These are hierarchical enemies, if you will, that we're talking about. We're told about no, nobody during the time of Christ, yet Ken, in his writings, which, by the way, I read his, uh, his book on, um, uh, on this very issue. I read it close to three times. Uh, in his writings, Ken admitted that the Carmen Christi predates Paul's writing, and Ken will have his whole rebuttal to touch upon the Carmen Christi, which does talk about Jesus Christ. It does predate the time that Paul was relaying that writing. All of the earliest ancient scholars that talked about this talk about it being an ancient record. Ken will have to deal with that. Ken there said there is no such proof of a man. He said there is a story. Well, apparently it's a story that the earliest texts talk about and the earliest enemies talk about as well. And as ridiculous as it may sound, I think 
Rabbi Akiva is more historically reliable than Ken Humphreys. The story has been embellished, Ken says, a sweeping statement without any evidence at all. And he goes into the Gospel of Mark. Notice, ladies and gentlemen, I didn't touch upon any of the Gospels. But if Ken does want to go into the Gospel of Mark, I would love to talk. We can use the whole debate to talk about Jesus Christ in the Gospel of Mark. We're told there is no resurrection in Mark. Ken is wrong. Maybe there is no story about what happens afterwards. But we are told that Christ will resurrect. And we're told that it is a much simpler Christ. Uh, if, if Ken is going to take the position and confine himself to the Gospel of Mark, um, uh, you've got to have to wonder if Ken will think that Mark referring to Christ as Yahweh is also a simpler Christ, uh, or as Mark referring to Christ as the Son of Man from Daniel, which is God from Daniel, which is Yahweh from the book of Daniel. Mark clearly connects that biblically, historically, and linguistically. If Ken is going to stick with the Gospel of Mark, he is in a world of trouble. Talking about a Christ that is very simple, I'm going to read Mark 2 for you. Anybody I would recommend, you know, I don't have enough time to go through the whole book. The Son of Man has the power on earth to forgive sins. Anybody may be thinking, well, what is the Son of Man? What is that referring to? The Son of Man is hearkening to Daniel, hearkening to someone that will receive. As Ken knows, the Bible uses different terms for Jesus Christ. An honor you must give him, proskuneo, is it can be given to mere human beings, as Christ would probably suggest this person is talking about. But then latria, from the word where we think of the word idolatry, where we derive, latria is derived from there. Actually, idolatry picks latria and puts it in there. That's where idolatry means, giving worship to somebody that is not God, making a false deity or God. We're told the Son of Man in Mark is Christ, and the Son of Man is to receive latria. So if Ken wants to try and say, well, there were a million people with the name Jesus Christ, you have to point out that they're talking about a particular one. We can point that out. Mark is talking about a particular Jesus Christ, a particular one that was deity, a particular one that was man, and a particular one that did exist. And again, Ken has this whole rebuttal to touch upon what I brought up in the Apostolic Fathers. All of them, right after the time of the resurrection, before the canon was even closed, as Ken knows, talk about Jesus having existed. Ken has a lot of work to do in his rebuttal period, and that is it for my rebuttal. Uh, we'll give the rest of my time to Ken now. Thank you. Okay, Mr. Humphrey, you can Thank you, William. Thank you. Um, I think we need to clarify that, that there is a, a distinction between theo theology and history. Now, I'm sure it may energize and, and engage the attention of, of devout Catholics and other Christians to you know, speculate and argue about the, the nature of, of Christ and his relationship to God and, and uh, his meaning of his sacrifice and, and, and et cetera and et cetera. But there's a difference between that and the reality of an individual who there was a man like like William and myself and everybody else. You know, we have to establish some historical basis if we are going to accept an historical person. You know, if we cannot simply take terms which are used in the theological debate arena and argue that that somehow proves anything. After all, these same arguments regarding ghosts, uh, regarding spirits and, and gods and so on, uh, could be argued and have been argued and were argued about Zeus and, and uh, uh, Apollo and Dionysus and every other deity that ever existed in the ancient world you know 
claims could be made for them that they did this, they did that, they did the, the, this particular uh, miracle, or etc. But in itself, it proves nothing, nothing at all about the reality of their existing. And, you know, I'm sure, if not William, then most Christians wouldn't imagine for a moment that Apollo existed or uh, Zeus existed, that, but even though many claims were made for them about the, the things they did, maybe people even sacrificed themselves for them. You know, the, 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 this, it, it, none of this it, it has any bearing on simple on the simple proof of was this a, was there a person? Do we have any evidence at all to substantiate his birth? Do we have any evidence at all to substantiate where he lived or where he performed his, his miracles, etc., etc.? You know, this, this is absent in all all that William has so far presented. We, we cannot build upon this because it's merely theological speculation. Now. He said about St. Augustine, but you know, you know, nothing anyone in the 3rd century or the 4th century can substantiate a person in the 1st century without a little bit of evidence, something that would bear up that, 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 their, their, their position. Or they may be just dreaming, they may be just speculating, it may, it may, it, it, it may, they may be tripping out on, 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 on sacred mushrooms, who knows? But Simply their belief does not, I, I feel, substantiate a person, a man. The, the, the myth exists, I don't doubt that, and the myth takes many different forms, but we're talking about an historical character, which <laughs> nobody noticed. Thank you. Okay, so then uh, now we can begin, I guess, with our cross-exam period, and... Uh, I'll tell you, what, we've saved enough time. I'm going to extend the cross-exam period to seven minutes each instead of six. Great. So, yeah, so we'll have seven minutes each cross-exam. That'll be a total of, I guess, 48 minutes for the cross-exam period in total. So, uh, I, uh, William, you would have the first cross-exam, and you can begin now. Thank you for that. Uh, thank you for your opening, your rebuttal there, Ken. Um now begins the fun part. We get to uh, interact with one another. Ken, um, I, I read your book a number of times, and I want to give you a little bit of a pl- I want to give the, a plug for it. I would recommend anybody get a hold of it. I really enjoyed it. In your book, you, you claim Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. In your book, you claim that Justin Martyr was the first person to invent the virgin birth. Is that correct? Um, if I said it, it probably was true. I mean, I, you know, I'm not going to recall all these. Right. Uh, it's just, also on your website. Right. Yeah. So. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, set aside the fact that I, I, I believe um, the Gospels are earlier evidence, but l- let's set those aside. Um, let's set the writings of Paul aside. How is it possible that Justin was, and this is in, in relation to the existence of Christ, because this is his birth. So this is why I'm asking, how is it possible if Justin was the first to invent this, how is it possible if Ignatius talked about the virgin birth before Justin Martyr? Sorry, can you clarify? I didn't quite get the logic of that. How is it before Justin Martyr? Justin Martyr, you claimed, was the first individual to invent the virgin birth. Yet Ignatius of Antioch talks about the virgin birth before Justin ever even wrote about it. How is it possible that Justin invented this? Well, I, I guess, I guess the, the, to, to, to respond, I, I guess we would have to have the particular quotes. Can you quote me uh, Ignatius's reference to the virgin birth? I mean, all these characters at different points added to the story. That's the thing that we can be sure of. Now, you know, the they, of the they mm-hmm. took what they took. What they, I mean, you will agree that, that there's nobody mentions. Uh, uh, I think it's Mary before before uh, uh, Ignatius introduces Mary. I think he's the first person to introduce Pontius Pilate. Um, you, you know, uh, th- th- all these individuals were adding to a commonly shared myth. Uh, about Jesus, and and the and the story obviously got embellished as they went along. They made it more interesting and more believable. Yeah, I I don't agree with you, Ken. But let me go ahead and let me read that. 
Um, now, the virginity of Mary was hidden from the prince of this world, as was her offspring and the death of the Lord. That can be found in the Epistle to the Ephesians, chapter 19, and I have checked the manuscript evidence. It is not part of any longer recension. It is part of the original manuscripts of Ignatius. So my, I, I will go right back to my original question. How can you make the claim Justin was the first, because you're making a lot of claims that a lot of things are invented and embellished as time goes on. How can you make the claim in your published material that Justin was the first to invent the virgin birth if we have it earlier than Justin? We have evidence in Ignatius, which you yourself in your book have dated to before Justin Martyr. I mean, you've pulled out one particular fact from from the 500-page book. Um, if I actually said that Justin was invented the virgin birth, then, then I surely believe so. Now, if you're telling me Ignatius mentions the virgin birth, then, then one precedes the other. I mean, I don't have a problem. If that is some <laughs> error I've made in, in dating, then, then so be it. I'm not sure what you think that proves. Does Ignatius mentioned in the, does Ignatius mention the virgin birth in around about the year one one ten one twenty? Does that make it a reality? Does that make it a reality because he mentions a virgin birth? What I think that it does do, I know I know this is not your cross period, but I'll answer that before I move to my next question. What I think it does do is that it does throw out of order some of the argumentation you're putting forth to claim that later on in time, as time goes on, something begins to become embellished and becomes fantastical. What I believe this proves is I believe this goes to the heart of the issue that shows that you're actually incorrect, and we can find these beliefs before what you're claiming. And this isn't just one issue, Ken. I can, I can, if, if, we had, if we had 200 minutes in the cross-examination, I could go through many more. And I'm going to move to another question. You claim, you make a, a, a shocking claim, you say that the first century writers, Paul, Clement, Barnabas, and Papias, do not quote Jesus at all. And, and I want to deal with only one right now because I have like two minutes of time left. You say they say nothing of him or his actions or his miracles. Ken, how can you make a sweeping statement like that if in 1 Corinthians 11, Paul is quoting at length from Jesus Christ in his discourse on the Lord's Supper? I don't think he is quoting from the the, 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 the Christ on, on this course on the on, on the on the Last Supper. You know, right, but, but you, your you, argument is you, you must be that... aware that there is a painful ab absence of confirmation from Paul of any historical figure called Jesus of Nazareth. He doesn't mention miracles. He doesn't mention Nazareth. He doesn't mention Mary. He certainly doesn't mention Mary, his virgin mother, and so on and so on. Okay, Ken, no, I there is an with absence you. of all this yeah. stuff. I, I, and in my next cross-examination, we'll touch upon the miracles. I, I don't agree with you, but I want to go right back to 1 Corinthians 11. I, I understand maybe you believe Paul was lying, but in your book you say that Paul does not quote, whether it's a lie or not, that's an argument for another day. You claim that Paul does not quote Jesus. Paul says that these are the words of Christ in 1 Corinthians 11. How can you, in your published material, claim that he never quotes Christ if he's saying that he's quoting Christ in 1 Corinthians 11? Well, you, you've said it it's yourself. It's, it could be lying. If, if, you know, but you admit that just he does because quote somebody, Jesus. Just because somebody articulates comments and attributes them to another person doesn't mean to say they actually said those words. But you do and I don't admit think they did. The, the interesting right. thing about Paul on quoting Jesus is if it, even if I allowed what you just said, how little he quotes Jesus. I mean, most of the time, he would prefers to quote your Yahweh rather than Jesus. That's how, that's how insignificant Paul, is, Paul refers to, to miracles and statements from Jesus. I'm out of time. It's, uh, it's your turn to cross and examine me now. No, 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 please, please continue. You're going to have some oh, no, of no, my yeah. time. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, have, I have more time. I, I, will, I will continue this. Don't worry. But, I mean, it is your yeah. time. You have seven minutes now. If you want to continue this same thought, I'd be more than glad to go deeper into it. Well, I, I would simply put it to you, and you obviously do believe this story of Jesus of Nazareth. Why is there such 
difficulty, let's use that word difficulty, in establishing any historical basis for him. Why does it all boil down to these spurious characters, these shady characters that we, for, we, for whom we have very little evidence, and your Ignatius is one of them, we have very little evidence for Mr. Ignatius ever existing. How is it that they... Uh, we, we rely upon these, and there is never any more substantial evidence. Why can't we have anything more material than just these quotes from special, you know, from, from from spurious characters? Thank you for that question, Ken. That's a very good question. Uh, I don't think that the evidence is very little, which is precisely why I touched upon the Carmen Christie in my opening and in my rebuttal period. As you've admitted, that predates Paul. That in and of itself if it does date to the time of the resurrection, shows uh, a hymn. And we even have enemies of the Christ confirming that the Christians sung hymns to Christ. That shows that a hymn was already established, a belief that a historical person named Jesus Christ existed. And as you said, there is about a million people named Jesus. I agree. But the particular one we're talking about, we can talk about him day and night. And I don't think anything is curious about it because uh, going right back to Ignatius, you claim there's very little to be known about him. I don't agree. Sure, we don't have his whole life story written, but we have enough. We, we only inside, have his death, really. <laughs> right. Inside of, his, inside of his official epistles, we have a lot. And Ignatius viewed Jesus Christ as a historical person and as almighty God. We read about him in Irenaeus. We can read about him in a number of individuals throughout history. I think that Ignatius was pretty well established as having existed. And I think that he did believe in a historical Christ. And if you want to talk about evidence, you can talk about Ignatius. You can talk about Clement of Rome. You can go all over the place. But remember what I was telling you in my rebuttal period. You don't believe that it's real, that Paul quoted Christ. But Paul says that he quoted Christ. And people... Oh, I, this well, I said the Paul. words. I, to you. I actually question right. whether Paul existed. Okay, well, that, that's interesting. But, but if you want to sweepingly uh, um, deny it existed, fine. Remember I brought up the enemies as well, Ken. People like Rabbi Akiba, people, people that mentioned, that put a ban on, on prayers that were referring to a person named Jesus. Rabbi Akiba's no small little character, Ken. We can, if you want to throw away all of the people that followed Christ, you can say they were liars or what have you. They were, um, you call them mafiosos, you call them thugs. Fine. If you want to stick to the enemies, we can do that, Ken. And they talk about a man having lived called Jesus Christ. So I think that's a big hole in your argument if they're talking about a man that existed called Jesus Christ. Well, let me put a question to you. Why does, yeah. why does Clement of Rome, right, yeah. why does he say so little about Jesus of Nazareth? Why does he actually seem to avoid telling the story of Jesus? Why does yeah. he seem to say so very little, for example, about his martyrs, you know, the martyred Peter and the martyred Paul? Why is it so, so, so nebulous and uncertain that you could question whether he's talking about it at all? That's a very good question, Ken. Why and, can't and, they state something clearly? I, and I don't agree with you. I think it's very clear. In 1 Clement 46, I don't think Clement can be any clearer that he's talking about a historical person. He says, remember the words of our Lord Jesus Christ. He quotes Christ so many times, Ken, that I lost count. 1 Clement 46. 1 listen, Clement you, wouldn't, you wouldn't accept somebody hold, hold quoting on. You, yeah, hold Zeus on, Ken, let, as evidence of Zeus. Right, Ken, let me just finish that vein of thought, and you can move on to Zeus. Clement, he quotes Christ, 1 Clement 46, 1 Clement 13, 1, 13, 2, 15, 2. He goes into, he's quoting Corinthians, quoting Paul, quoting the Gospels. He doesn't talk about Christ a little bit. He talks about him a lot, Ken, which, which to me, with all due respect, I am shocked that in your book, you make the claim that Clement never quoted him. I lost count of the amount of times Clement quoted him because he believed he was a historical figure, Ken. So I, again, I think that that is another hole in your argument. And you said, you told me in the beginning of the debate, you said, okay, well, that's one argument on my part. If I can show a, a, a truckload of arguments, Ken, then I would recommend that you give Christianity another chance before tossing it completely out. I would recommend you go back and you study the sources because I, I think you're way off, Ken. 
I, unlike yourself, William, I am not a believer. Therefore, I don't stretch my credulity over all kinds of nebulous and uncertain comments because I want to believe. I, I, I either want either. to yeah. believe or disbelieve. Yeah, you know, I wasn't always a believer either, Ken. I will be convinced by evidence. Yeah, Ken, let, let me just let me answer that for you. It seems like a question. I have not always been a believer. I have not always been a Roman Catholic, and there's nothing uh, in this for me to be lying about this or forcing myself to believe. I have not always been a Roman Catholic. I went through a long period after being Protestant of not being sure about the existence of anything because my faith was so struck for a long period of time. But I think there is a, a shockingly la- large amount of that, a lot of evidence that can prove that a person named Jesus Christ existed, Ken. And I think if we follow well, that... You, you, logic, you obviously believe that, but your evidence wouldn't con- convince a skeptic like myself because there is always that... You know, people will argue that daily miracles are occurring. You know, they will see some event and they say, oh, that's Jesus, that's God, that, that's you know, the Holy Ghost intervening. But other people would just see it as, well... From time to time, these things happen. You know, it's a coincidence. You know, not think of the times when these things don't happen. You know, that is what the the problem is with people who believe, who study the Gospels, who study the New Testament. They're always going to err on the side of belief and faith because that's what it means so much to them. You may the have changed your opinion from time to time, well, what but about you the enemies? obviously. Yeah, what about the enemies? What about, what, what, what but we have nothing from the enemies. All we have is Christians recording what you call our enemies. <laughs> we have no original documents from them. If you look at someone like Josephus, there's only one very suspect passage in, in, in Josephus. If you throw that out, there's virtually you know, the whole thing is not about Christianity. It's not about Christ. You know, Ken, it, it, I, I don't think know, that is, is the problem enemy. with the enemies. Go to the yeah. enemies themselves. I have, yeah, and 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 with all due respect, uh, I wouldn't, I wouldn't lump Josephus into the enemies category. But I, I didn't even bring Josephus up because of the disputed text. But uh, I, I believe that that is. It's now my turn, so I, I do want to continue that. But uh, I will allow the moderator to, um, to allow me to continue. I think the moderator might be on mute. Yeah, we, we, we just, we just, there we, we just reached. The time. And so, um, yeah, now you can go ahead and start your time now, William. Okay. Yeah, Let me go now. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, that, that's, a, that's a very good point that you bring up there, Ken. Um, unfortunately, in my opening, I don't rely just upon enemies that are quoted by Christians. I don't rely just upon enemies that you can maybe make the argument that there was interpolations there. First off, I'm not aware of any scholar. Can you name one scholar that says Celsus didn't write what is attributed to him? Celsus? Yes. Can you name one? Yeah. Well, of course, but we only have Celsus because of origin, don't we? Right. We, we don't Granted. have Celsus himself. But, but can you name one scholar that says that origin interpolated anything in there? This is a diatribe against... Uh, uh, yeah, I, I, I probably could. I probably could. But th- there are subtleties that would be probably lost it, uh, on the debate right now. But the point is, you, you, you do understand, there was a Christian writer centuries after Celsus who was still rebutting the man, and he doesn't provide us with a copy of Celsus. He just quotes him extensively. The fact that he was relying upon him, you know, he does ex- he, uh, copy the material quite extensively. That's why we largely accept what Celsus said. But, you know, it, 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 you, you, do, you obviously do take the point. You know, I, I Christians do were not point, interested Ken. in preserving the enemy's <clears throat> copy. Excuse me. I do, I do get your point, Ken. But remember in my opening, I, I brought up him. I brought up Pliny. I brought up Lucian. I brought up... Uh, Rabbi Akiva, I, and I brought up trifle. I haven't heard about any of those from you, Ken. So are you? Are you? Well, we, we can hold on. Let, we can wait, let me ask let's, you. Let's take another one. Then let's take Pliny the Younger. Oh, hold right? on. Let's hold on. Let, the let, let me, Ken. Let me frame that into a question, I, and you can you can continue right here. Can you? And yes, I named Pliny, Lucy, and I named uh, Trifo and Rabbi Akiva. Are you making the claim that all of these are Christian interpolations? When you put it like that, it sounds like a gross statement on my part. But let me answer with this comment. 
What did Christians do with the material of people they disapproved of and didn't agree with? They actually destroyed it. They actually pulled down the temple to the pagans. They burned the books. They suppressed the the heresies of, of, of the heretics. They did not preserve other material. They preserved what was useful to them and the church. Well, it's so pretty, it's pretty in incredible that, that these, is, that these it, are around, though, right? It's pretty incredible. If, so, if, if the Christians destroyed everything, isn't it pretty incredible that we've got all of these enemies and their testimony, Ken? It, it is pretty incredible. It is pretty incredible. Well, they must if have you not take the Dead, right? sea, the Dead Sea Scrolls or the, the Nagamani texts, you know, only by chance from digging through a rubbish heap did they find the Gnostic texts, which had otherwise almost disappeared. The Christians were a, 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 were a tremendous organization of intolerance for material which didn't fit their program. And so Ken, for over centuries uh-huh. they destroyed this material. Great, okay. Ken, Celsus, Pliny, um, Lucian, uh, Rabbi Akiva, Trifo, did they all believe that Christ, Jesus the Christ, not just a, any random Christ, did they all believe that this man, not a god, this man, did they believe he at least existed? That's, a, that's, that's an interesting point. I think in the, in the uh, reading the debates, it was as if they were prepared to accept where the Christians say existed, and, and so, okay, let's suppose he existed. I think there's a, there's a, bit, there's a bit of leeway there, right? That, that's a great, great answer, Ken. Ken, let, let me ask you this. Yeah, let, you, and you can continue your point with this. Uh, that's a great answer. And if you say there was a little bit of leeway. If there was a little bit of leeway and acceptance, why is it, Ken, that Rabbi Akiva basically lost his mind over the usage of Christians praying Jesus Christ's name out loud, and he banned Old Testament scripture from being used? Why is it, if there was a little bit of leeway and acceptance, why the fury from Rabbi Akiva if he didn't, if he didn't acknowledge that these individuals were latching upon a person he viewed as a mere human to worship? The Jews of the 2nd and 3rd century knew what the story was that the Christians were teaching, right? The most pertinent thing at the time was not really to describe, you know, th- this idea that he didn't exist is something drawn out of the evidence. But at the time, if you were a, an enraged Jew, it's unlikely that you would put forward the argument, this guy never existed. It's more likely you would bring forward the notion, well, he was the bastard son of, of a hairdresser. That's the sort of notion you would bring forward. And as you know, that is actually what they did bring forward. So there was a lot so of black believe- propaganda on the part. Is that, is, that a yes? is that a yes? The Jews believe... No, that it's not a... It, it's just we, we no. cannot know. You know, they could not know. How From could somebody in the 2nd or 3rd century know whether Jesus existed in the 1st century? From All the they knew that was Christians... Have. From the documentation Sorry? we have... From the documentation we have, Ken, 100s, 200s, 300s, 400s, any of the 100s, any of the 100s, can you name one Jew that says this man did not exist, Ken. Can you name one? That was no, that wasn't an argument that they it made at that argument. time. And we all, we had very little material from that very early period, that dark age of Christian origins. You know, we have very little material. We we, we he, he, what emerges out of the mist is this idea that there was a man, no actual tangible evidence that there was, but an idea that there was a man. And that same idea was probably object, uh, uh, accepted by Jews in the same way they probably accepted a whole host of other people. I don't know, they went around you know, denying that Dionysus didn't exist or, 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 or Apollo didn't exist. It's, it, it wasn't the way in which they thought. There was no, no clear clear division in those times between the spiritual world which everybody accepted and, and, and the real world you know so it's, it's it doesn't surprise me that we don't have a, a statement from them but i mean there is a quote, quote from kelsus where he says you invent a jesus for yourself you uh, know actually, so that, that's the, 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 from trifle that's from trifle but my time is up it, and you can cross-examine me on that that was not kelsus that was trifle but you can cross-examine me now my time is up 
Well, <laughs> okay, let's, let's, let's go. Let's go. Sorry, are we, are we okay? Yeah? Uh, I was going to say, well, you still have another 30 seconds, but that's... Okay, yeah, uh, if I have another went. 30 seconds, let, 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 me go, let me use those 30 seconds right away. Let me put my timer on, 25, okay. Uh, yeah, that, that quote is not from Celsus, uh, where he says you invent a, a Jesus. That, uh, actually, that comes from Trifo, and Trifo is not talking about... Okay, okay, uh, yeah, quite yeah, possibly let, let me, so, yeah. Let me, okay. let me just finish my answer. The Trifo is not claiming that, they, that um, Christians invent in the sense of they create. The Greek word there is completely different. He's talking about, uh, he's saying that they invent uh, a kind of character from this man that existed. Your turn now. <laughs> okay. Well, by all means, continue your point if it's needed. Um, where, where, do we, where do we go from here? You, know, you, you will obviously argue for these various testimonies of early characters. Um, I would question their validity in almost any context because... They, they, they are not concerned with history in the way that we are concerned with history. If you, if you, 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 mentioned, you mentioned about uh, 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 Justin, right? Now, right. if you read Justin, you, you, you know that Justin's primary, Justin, primary means of saying that there was a Christ is that it fulfilled prophecy. That is where he brings his evidence from. He, he goes through, at quite at some length, he goes through the Old Testament and he draws out some statement or other, some, 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 some uh, attribution to a, a Jewish sage and says, here, here is the prophecy and we know that's true of Christ. He, act, you know, if, he basically argues we don't really need other evidence. It's all been fore, foretold in the Old Testament. So... Quite clearly, you know, we have this Christ figure because it was all said in the Old Testament. Now, that is a way of arguing that nobody would accept today. That's you know, a very that good is point, not Kim. the way. Let me answer that for you. Uh, I disagree with you. I, I think that you grossly misinterpret and distort Justin. In fact, I've read Justin many, many times. Uh, I've read him in, his origi in the original language that comes to us and in English. And Justin, um, if you read, you may be wondering, why does he stick to using the Old Testament of the Jews? And why does he rarely touch upon the New Testament? There's a reason why. He's dialoguing with Jews, and he is sticking to their canon. And he is telling them, we can prove all about our faith from your canon. We don't have to go into, the, into what we hold as dear and what we hold dear to our heart. We can prove it from your canon. Remember, when Justin is dialoguing with Trifon, you told me, you, you've told me many times you don't think anything can convince you. Well, Ken, why is it that this, this and, and you call Trifo fictional? I'll, I'll agree with you for, for, um, for clarity's sake. Why is it that Trifo believed that Jesus Christ existed as a man, called him a man over and over and over, if the Jews of his time didn't believe that, and before his time. Remember, Justin is arguing with them from their theology and defending the faith. And the words that he puts in Trifo's mouth are, the man Christ, the man Christ, over and over. Does that not provide evidence that he must have existed, they believed he existed, and the Jews believed it as well? Well, you, you, you said it yourself, it Trifo is, is, is a creation of Justin. You know, we don't have Trifo's testimony of what he really thought. We have tri Justin using them as a foil for his arguments. And what I said, to clarify, is that Justin goes again and again to the Old Testament, to the Jewish scripture, and says, here is evidence of our Christ, because your text says this, and therefore that fits what we interpret Christ to be. Yes, we're, not the he does that, back to any, we're, we're not referring back to any historical point at all. It's simply that's, a, 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 yeah, a, a didactic point. That, that is not correct, Ken, because what, uh, that is not all that Justin does. Justin goes over and over to show historically that this particular Christ he is talking about is indeed the Messiah. Remember, in your book, you yourself made the argument that Trifo didn't exist, but the argument that you made, Ken, 
And I've got it here bookmarked. The argument you made was, even if Trifo didn't exist, the words that Justin puts in his mouth must have been what the Jews believed. And if that is true, Ken, then your argument crumbles to the ground because the Jews believed he was a mere man, thus having existed. Of course, Justin's going to stick to the Old Testament of the Jews because they didn't accept the Deuterocanon or the New Testament. So he tells them, but, I'm going to stick. But, but let me, he tells, hold on, let me just finish. He tells them, I'm going to stick to your truncated Aquila version. And he refutes them from that. But they believe Jesus existed, Ken. I, I, I don't accept, and it isn't valid, that you say because Justin is qu- quoted Trifo, a character of his own creation, then what he says must be true of the Jews. You, Ken, there's you no that, way Ken? that anyone could argue that. Ken, I did not say that, Ken. You in your book well, You're said, saying that he, 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 if, you're, <laughs> let, let's clarify. You're saying that J- Justin says Trifo says that, that, that Jesus was a man. Therefore, the Jews must have believed he was a man. And what I think what you use saying. the argument. Your argument in your book, you claim that Trifo says that Christ did not exist. And your argument was that if he believed he didn't exist, then that was the mindset of the Jews of his time. Well, you're incorrect. So if you're incorrect, why is it not the opposite? That if they did believe, you're saying they didn't believe. But we, if Trifo we, was we, actually we, saying we, he did, why... why we, I mean, cannot, should, we cannot we cannot establish a, 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 a point from this. You know, there is, there, I, I there, think there's can. no point in... Let, let's take another character then that, 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 that uh, Justin doesn't mention. Paul. Now, why is it that Justin doesn't mention Paul? What would you say to that one, William? I don't think that's relevant to the argument, because remember what Justin is talking about. Justin is not talking about... In fact, there's a lot of people that Justin doesn't mention, Ken. Remember what yeah, the argument is. You're talking of a very, a very key player here yeah, for Christianity. There, there's a reason why he doesn't mention Paul. There's a reason why he doesn't mention a lot of people. Justin is arguing from a truncated, unabridged text to prove that Christ is the Messiah. I don't see why on earth he would bring up Paul if the Jews viewed Paul as a heretic. Why would he bring up Paul as an authority, Ken? That doesn't make any sense. Because, in, because in later centuries, Christians used Paul all the but time. The Jews did and I not. would suggest... Ken, I would suggest the at, the, not, at, at, the, at the time that Paul was seen as, as heretical by, by Orthodox Christians, and he hadn't been domesticated at that point in time. Subsequently, when they wrote new Pauline epistles, that's his epistles in his name, then Paul became an acceptable to the Orthodox uh, school of thought, and therefore he was quoted. Okay, yeah. well, let, 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 right, let, right. let's... I don't agree with you. And again, your question, regardless of all the claims you're making about Paul, your question was, why wouldn't Justin bring up Paul? And I told you why. There's no reason to bring up a heretic that they viewed had no authority. The authority for them was the Old Testament scriptures. That is why Justin is, he tells them, I'm going to hearken to your authority and prove my faith from it. And he does that. Okay, I, think it's I hear a, a tone. Yeah, I think it's my turn now. Yeah, yeah. Right, right, okay. right, right. My last drop <laughs> yeah, My last yeah. one. <laughs> okay, I will begin now. Okay, Ken, you made a, uh, you made a statement. I'm, unfortunately, the time goes so fast. In your opening and um, sticking to rebuttal, you made the claim that, Christ, that Paul – doesn't talk a lot about Christ. You say that Paul never mentions any miracles that Jesus made. Is that correct? I, are you saying in my book or here now, here and now? Paul well, mentions you, you, no well, miracles. You, you did make the you did make the claim in your book. I've heard you make the claims in your debates, and I think you made it earlier today. All right, let's let, 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 let's 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 say yes. Okay, Paul does not mention the miracles. Yeah, yep. I'm okay. happy with that comment. In Romans 15, 18, Paul, and 15, 18 and 19, Paul uses the Greek for, for miracles, uh, teraton, in verse 19. Paul is talking about Christ having worked miracles through him. 
My question is this for you, Ken. Why is it in your book and in your debates, I've heard, and in your website, why do you make the claim that Paul, I guess, sort of knew nothing about this historical figure, Christ, if Paul himself says that this Jesus Christ performed miracles through him? But hang on, hang on. I'm, I'm, hold, hold on, I'm sorry. The Greek Paul, word is Paul, Paul, I, I'm, I'm Paul, sorry, Paul performed miracles through him. Who is actually performing the miracle then? Christ. We have uh, Christ mentioned in verse 18. It said what Christ has accomplished through me. And then we have the Greek word teratone used in verse 19. So th- this, is, this is not Paul saying, quoting, reporting, Christ walked on water. This is not Paul saying, Christ cured blindness. Right, but it's a miracle though, right? This is Paul saying, I'm doing something clever here, and it's Christ who's animating okay, me. Ken, I you're don't right. think that is the He's same thing. Quoting. Ken, okay, I, I respect your opinion. You're right. He's not quoting walking on water. He's not quoting whatever other kind of miracle you're talking about. Correct. But that is not the question, Ken. The question is, does Paul attribute a miracle, regardless of what kind of miracle you want it to be, does he or does he not say Christ performed miracles through him? That, that is fine. But the okay. logical That's point fine. that I would make to a general audience is that Paul never quotes the miracles performed by Jesus. But, That's but you point. admit... Not miracles admit, he might have done himself. Right, but you admit that this is a miracle performed by Christ. Paul here oh, is clear. Well, he says in the Greek... So, po- uses, so, so Paul says... In the Greek, he uses the Greek katergasomai. It, it is in the yeah, verb so indicative Paul form. Is, Paul is, is the verb. claiming... Yes, he's claiming that... Paul that is Christ claiming he's working a miracle. I, I, and he say, he's attributing it to Jesus. I Thank suppose you, yeah. you wouldn't be too pleased to quote it if he was saying, and Dionysus made me, allowed me to make this miracle. You're which saying, ah, well, you attribute it to Christ. Right, which he doesn't do. But that is not the argument, Ken. Again, this goes right back to your sweeping statement that you, you try to discredit early historical testimony to the existence of Jesus Christ by claiming that these people don't attribute miracles to Christ, regardless of whether you think it's a lie or not. You <laughs> Look, just let's be, you let's just be realistic here, William. You when, you speak, Paul, when we speak of the, the miracles of Jesus, when we speak of the miracles of Jesus, what do most people think of? They think of raising the dead. They think of curing blindness. They, they think of walking on water. These are the miracles that people think of. And the anomaly, the strangeness, is that Paul supposedly is, mir- is a missionary never mentions those. All right, I'll concede to you, he might say in Romans 15, yes, I've done something clever here, and it was Jesus that that performed that miracle. All right, so there is that little bit. But we are talking mainstream here, and most people would be surprised that the key missionary of Jesus never mentions the miracles performed by Jesus of Nazareth. Ken, what is the largest Christian denomination in the world? I believe it's the Roman Catholic denomination. And your statement right now that everybody would believe, well, this, is, this has got to be a miracle. That has got to be a miracle. That is wrong, Ken. In the largest denomination that you just, you admitted, the Catholic Church is the largest denomination. If you talk about miracles in the Catholic faith, they're going to think about those, those things, right? But they're also going to think about the Eucharist. And Paul does quote the Eucharist as a miracle. How can you refute that if that is a, quote-unquote, as you said, mainstream miracle? And Paul lists that as a miracle performed by Christ at the Last Supper. Well, I'll share with you a a little tidbit there, William. I've actually attended a Eucharist uh, in recent times, and... I didn't feel there was any supernatural power affecting that, that's fine, me Ken, then or but, since. But the text, we're talking about what Paul says, Ken. I understand you have no faith and you don't believe in miracles. I respect that. But we're talking about the fact that Paul talks about a historical character that performed miracles. That is the argument that we're dealing with. Okay. One character called Paul speaks of Jesus, another character 
performing miracles through him. All right, I accept there is that bit of text. If, if, if that is important to you. I, 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 it's very important to me. I'm glad that you accept it. I, and I would hope that perhaps you, you edit your book if you release your book later on and you do include that. Well, yeah, I, but you, you see, I don't know quite what the, off the top of my head, of course, what, what I actually said. But when I re- repeated the statement that Paul quotes none of the miracles of, of Jesus Christ, I mean the ones that most people would regard as miracles. Not and most, you, Chris. And, and most Christians... And the largest Christian denomination in the world would regard the Eucharist as a miracle, as you just admitted. And that miracle is well, the text of Paul. There's, pl- there's plenty of Christians who do not think it's a miracle, I and that there that. is no, tra- no conversion that. of bread and wine. I grant that, Ken, but the largest denomination, the Catholic Church, if you talk about miracles, they will believe that that is a miracle. And if we talk about mainstream, the way you're talking about they would stick to that, and they would think of the Eucharist. And Paul does talk about it. I, 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 I don't know how much well, time I have left. How much time do I have left? Do I have any time left? Yeah, two, yeah, let me, two, let, two more minutes left. Let me, let me try and get in another question. Uh, in your book, and I've heard it in your, in your debate as well, Ken, you make a – I'm going to go right back uh, to Trifo, uh and briefly because the time is fleeting. You say that Trifo says – that um, you have invented a Christ. Um, are you aware that Trifo is not claiming that they invented a person of Christ, but that they invented the Messiahship, that this person actually was Messiah? He doesn't deny he existed. He just denies that he's the Messiah. Are you aware of that? Yeah, I think that's a plausible argument that someone, if he had been around, and Trifo, you know, we can, can see that, that he might have been, it, 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 it's a sort of reasonable argument to make. He's saying, you know, wherever you're doing this thing, thing you're, you're inventing him. Right. Can any enemy, Sorry? any heretics, the Gnostics, the, the Manichaeans, uh, the Arians, any of them, did any of them deny that Jesus Christ existed? I'm sure some of them did from time in, to time. I'm sure they denied each. I'm, I'm sure they denied each other's heresies. Right, Ken. I mean, can that's the one, nature of the beast. one heretical group. Can you name one heretical group for the audience that denied that Jesus existed? Well, uh, yes, the the Docetists, for example. They, he was they, a they, 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 they said that he only seemed to exist. Actually, they said he was a phantom. Dakain means to seem to be. They see, they yeah, say okay, he a phantom. A phantom. He, he, seemed, he seemed to exist, yes? Right, but they believe that Jesus was a phantom. Can you name a group that didn't right. believe? That didn't believe... Hang on, hang on. so you're, you're saying if, if you believe he's a phantom, that's, that's equivalent to existing? No, actually, I'm saying that no... Yeah, do we believe in ghosts, ghosts, then? Are we going to say no. ghosts are evidence of, of reality? The, the point is this, Ken. Whether they were heretical, and, and, they, and they were... They still believed a Jesus Christ existed. Your argument is that he didn't exist. Even the heretical I, let, me, let, me, let me clarify that. I'm saying he didn't exist as a, a human being. There was no historical Jesus. Yes, okay, so these people thought there was a, a, a spiritual or a, 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 an entity moving around as Jesus. Fine. I'm sure they had all kinds of wacky notions. But right. it doesn't make him an historical figure. Right. And, and, uh, and in regards to what you believe about Christ, is it correct, as this is my final question as my time rolls out, is it correct, Ken, that you cannot find your belief anywhere in the first, I don't know, 1,800 years? Is that correct? What can't I find in, the, in 1,800 years? Your particular belief about Christ. Oh, my, what you mean, that no, but nobody in an earlier age denied that Christ existed? You, is, that, is that your comment? That is yeah? correct, yes. Well, I've I asked wouldn't you to, say... I've asked it, you to, it, to it, point it to one source, and you haven't been able to. Well, no, um, I'm just saying that the church was so dominant over much of the world and Europe for that period of time that, of course, it didn't enter people. That people were mired in such ignorance that they were and dominated by the church that, of course, they didn't start. But and if they had, if they had start wondering about Jesus, they would have soon have shortened their life. So yeah, okay, it's not surprising that only the age of enlightenment allowed uh, questioning the, the, this reality. Okay, my, my time is up. I believe it's your, your final cross-ex. 
this is your cross examination. This will be the final cross examination. Then we'll have a uh, closing statement, which will be uh, seven minutes each. So, thank uh, you. You have eight minutes uh, cross examination, the last eight minutes. Right. Oh, 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 okay. Okay. Well, let's, let's consider, let's move the, the, the dialogue on a little bit. Why, why do you think that, for example, the, uh, the Gospels are anonymous doc- documents, that we, we really only have the attribution of the Church towards the end of the second century to give them names? Why, why are they anonymous? Why are these key documents, key documents for Christianity, why are they anonymous? I don't believe that they're anonymous. But uh, as, as far as your dating goes... Uh, you, I think you answered the point uh, right there for yourself. That why are they dated rather late? Well, if you, we think about the time that Christ died, we think about when the resurrection happened historically. Uh, if you want to date the Gospels to around that time, that's fine. But remember, in my opening, Ken, I didn't touch upon the Gospels because I know that you view them as very late. What I did touch upon was Paul, which you, you have yourself admitted Galatians was written by Paul. Romans was written by Paul. They're earlier than the Gospels. And if you want to say the man wasn't named Paul, he was named Greg or Bob, you can call him whatever you want. The name of that individual, the person, wrote that at a much earlier time, talked about a hymn that does date to the time of the resurrection, which is called by ancient scholars, an ancient record, and it does talk about Jesus the Christ having existed. So I think we have great evidence that this man did exist, Ken, and I think it is historically viable to look at them, look at the earth. And, and remember, I didn't just, I didn't just touch upon, upon the Bible. In fact, I dealt more with, with individuals outside of the Bible, enemies as testimony to the fact that he existed. I think we have a great amount of evidence. The, that I think the, the interesting thing about that hymn in Philippians is, is that it, it speaks of Christ uh, as, as a god becoming a man, and uh, that that to me it says a lot because you know the, 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 he doesn't refer back to a man being born and and becoming god as it, you might form the that impression in in from the gospels. It's quite the reverse. But I let me draw you back to, right. the, to let, the gospels. Let, let, let me just you let me, say let me you don't that think, right away if you though. don't. Ken, let me just if touch you don't on that think right they were anonymous, who do you think wrote the, uh, the Gospels then? Let me just answer that for you right away, and then I'll get to the Gospel uh, question. Uh, in regards to the Creed, yeah, I, I agree with you. The Creed is not trying to lay out every single part of the life of Christ. But remember, what does the Creed begin? Remember when the Creed begins, it begins with a relative pronoun, who? The Creed reads that this is an ancient record. And what is the ancient record about? talking about the man, Jesus Christ, who was God, God incarnate. If you want to talk about the Gospels, I do believe that they were eyewitness testimony. I know you're going to, you, you believe that that would be completely um, absurd, they have interpolations and what have you. But remember, Ken, I didn't bring those into my opening statement or even hearken upon them as evidence. You're the one that went to the Gospel of Mark, and I think that that's trouble for you. Because the Gospel of Mark talks about the Jesus Christ that you don't want to talk about, a man who was God incarnate. I think that they were eyewitness testimony, but I don't need to rely upon them to prove to you that this man that we're talking well, about it, it, didn't it, exist. It, 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 it. It's a, it's amusing that you would prefer to, to you know not to use the argument from the gospels because I would think you'd be pretty desperate for any evidence of a, a human Jesus without relying upon the, the gospels because that is the only source of the story of this man who supposedly was born of a virgin and lived lived in Nazareth and perambulated around Galilee. Well, Where therein, would you there, get that story from? There, therein lies your big problem, there, Ken. Because I don't need to rely just upon them. And you, you keep asking, well, you keep saying, well, I would think you would want to rely upon them. Why? If I can prove this from documents that you think are dated earlier, I don't agree with you. I would love to deal with the Gospels alone, but hold on, hold on. Hang on. So you, let, you... Let me, hold on, I'm not done answering this. You claim they're dated very late, which is precisely why I'm harking to earlier testimony. I believe, I believe Paul does talk about the virgin birth when he talks about the seed of Christ. I believe he does talk about it there. That is an unusual phraseology that he does use when he's talking about uh, the birth of Christ. Does he talk about everything that you can find in the Gospels? No. 
He doesn't. But we can find out. You're, you're talking about uh, Gospels, talking about the resurrection and what have you. Remember the topic at hand, Ken. The topic of the debate is if Jesus existed or not. And we can prove he did from earlier documentation. Well, I don't think you can from Philippians, you know, and, 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 and the creed in, in, in Philippians. You, you, you merely get this, this suggestion that he came from heaven, you know, uh, but, but there is no, you know, you, how would you, you would not be able to construct a story of, of Jesus of Nazareth from, from that alone. There's, you know, that, that is barely, provides anything at all. You may as well be thinking of any other god of the ancient world. You know, unfortunately, so, so sparse. Right. Unfortunately, we can't think of any. We cannot think of any other god in the ancient world if we're reading Philippians, because as I told you right now, what does a creed begin with? It begins with a relative pronoun who, and it's talking about an ancient record about Jesus Christ. We can't think about Dionysus or, or Zeus or Thor or whoever else you're talking about, Ken, because Philippians is talking about Christ. We know that it is referring to a person. That person is named Jesus Christ. So even if you believe that the writer was lying, even if you believe he was a liar, he was doing it for money, for profit, whatever, it is talking about a person named Jesus Christ who existed. And the title of the debate is, Did Jesus Exist? And I think Philippians proves that he did. Well... <laughs> Yeah. The, th- the trouble is you're blurring continuously this distinction between a how? human being and Show some other that. form of spirit. Look, if you said somebody was with God in heaven as a spirit and emptied himself as a, as a, as a, a slave or a servant, you know, that is not a, a position that could be maintained historically. That is not evidence of a human being being born. At, you know, it's simply your faith allows you to interpret that from, in the way in which you want to. You know, I don't if, agree if that with was that. said about yeah. any other creature, any other creature, you would not accept it. But right. because it's that's said that's about your point. Christ, you think it's true. That's a really good point, there, Ken, and I, I don't agree with you. Um, remember what we're talking about again. You, you keep trying to veer off into other topics. You keep trying to say, well, it doesn't talk about how he was born or talk about this or that. That isn't the argument at hand, Ken. The argument at hand is the fact that this author, who I believe was Paul, is talking about a person named Jesus Christ. Whether you want to believe or not that he was on mushrooms, like you said, drunk or whatever, maybe made it up that he was God or what have you, which I don't agree with. He still talks about the familiarity, familiarity of a person named Jesus Christ. You talk about there being many different Christs. I agree. There probably were. But the particular Jesus Christ that we're talking about, every person talks about the same one. God incarnate, almighty God. Whether you believe it or not, that is in the text, Ken. You cannot, you cannot know that these people who at different points, in different points in history, in different points in their lives, reiterated the term Jesus Christ or Jesus Lord Christ or Lord Jesus Christ, you cannot possibly know what they had in their own mind when they might have coined that phrase. You, know, you, you are can. talking of yeah, a I, spiritual I entity that... No, yeah, you're talking of a spiritual entity, not a reality. Yeah, I don't believe that, Ken, and I think that we can know. I think if we look at Clement, what Clement talks about, a historical person that rose from the dead, if we look at Ignatius, what does Ignatius do? Ignatius talks about a person named Jesus that existed. He talks about him having been God. Remember, he uses the term pharm- pharmacon Athanasios to say that he is the God of the Christians to differentiate from all the other false deities. So when they're talking about Jesus, they're not just talking about some random guy that they ran into at the market. They're talking about Jesus from the biblical text. You, you are they not talking about a man. Text. And you know, you know the heretics each spoke about a different sort of Christ. They that's didn't all they agree a poor. Right. That's eh? why they were heretical, Ken. And that, and that is why... Yeah, but, as, you, as, uh, but, but you see, you're dismissing the no. bulk of early Christians. You're saying they, because the Catholic Church ultimately de- decided they were heretics, so they were named. But no, they were that is Christians not what I'm saying, who Ken. had a particular point of view. 
That, that's not what I'm saying, Ken. In fact, I was, I was not done with my sentence. The argument doesn't hold water, Ken, because these heretical groups like the Gnostics, like the, the Arians, like the, uh, the Docetists, all of these came much later, Ken. They came later. We don't well, have only, anybody only in that some interpretations. The, 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 the Gnostics can be argu- arguably the Gnostics were certainly among the first of early Christians, not among the last of early right. Christians. They were among they, the first. They still dated later, and they had their own Christ, not this common agreed Christ. Right, and they're still dated later. I hear the I hear the tweet. I hear the tweet. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's <good>. <laughs> <laughs> tweet tweet. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, so now we have the closing statements And uh, really, really engaging Very informative debate, gentlemen I really appreciate you both um, Coming on this platform To go ahead and um, Squabble about uh, historical And theological details Which, um, um, of course Matter to a lot of people So uh, I'm glad that you guys uh, Are letting your opinions be made known And uh, and let the public go ahead And uh, decide uh you know, the information that they feel is most appealing to them. Uh, so you have a seven-minute closing statement, and um, I think that means William, William's the yes. first closing. Yeah, then, I will go then and, then Ken, and then Ken will close. Then Ken has the last word. Okay, go ahead. Yes. Okay, I'll begin. Okay. okay, I'll begin now. Thank you for that, Ken. I, I very, very, very much enjoyed this debate. I, I in fact, uh, before uh, – and part of my closing, I'll say – um, I would recommend people buy Ken's book and read it, uh, e- even though I don't agree with a lot of it. I think Ken did a very scholarly job. He touches upon a lot of heretical groups. He, I, I was fascinated by his book. In fact, I, I asked myself the question before I was done with the book. I said, how can he not believe, believe Christ existed after all that he's written? But I'll tell you what, where, where, um, where Ken goes wrong. And unfortunately, Ken, uh, I, I, can, I want to consider Ken a friend, and I hope we can sit, continue dialoguing throughout the years and become uh, better friends. I think that um, – I think he's very, very off in his um, uh, historical documentation. I think uh, he, he admitted, and I'm glad most people will not admit in debate, to being wrong about Paul. If we look at Paul, uh, we will see that Paul does believe that Christ performed miracles, that Christ um, – uh, was God incarnate? And you might be wondering, what, what, how is that important? I'm going to tell you how that's important. I heard a number of people debate Ken before, and I was just shocked that these people, all they really cared about, and a lot of people that debate this topic, <clears throat> all they really care about is to argue about a person named Christ. And if you're going to argue that Jesus Christ existed, my argument would be that you have to defend the particular Christ from your faith and prove that he is historical. And the Jesus Christ talked about in the Bible can be proven to have been a real living person. Not just a person with a name, but a person who the early followers believed <clears throat> was a man. They believed he was God incarnate. And shockingly, the enemies, the early enemies, believed he existed. They don't believe he was God, which is why they're enemies. They believe he existed, though. That is the downfall of the mythicist position. You can look anywhere you look. Docetism, Arianism, Gnosticism, <laughs> they believed in the, and you know, Ken admitted it. They had their particular Christ. Granted, they all date later than what Paul is talking about in the Carmen Christi. They date much later to that. What is Paul talking about there? Talking about a man named Jesus Christ that was God incarnate. What, do, what is the Didache, Diognetus, Clement, Ignatius, Justin? What do they all talk about? How can you tell me he did not exist if they all talk about a historical figure by that name? Remember what I said in my opening. 
Three pillars of proof. One, <clears throat> Ken was not able to disprove the historicity of the Carmen Christie. Two, he was not able to overturn the fact that all of the apostolic fathers believed, all of them believed, this figure named Jesus Christ existed. Three, the enemies of the faith. Even if you want to claim Celsus was interpolated, you can knock him off if you want. You can't knock off Pliny. You can't knock off Lucian. You can't knock off Rabbi Akiva or the fictional Trifo, if you will. All of them talk about a historical person named Jesus Christ. We're told, well, they might have come to believe this or that. Uh, they might have allowed leeway for that belief. No, they didn't allow any leeway. Rabbi Akiva didn't allow any leeway. He banned a biblical text that was used by all the Jews. Why did he ban it? Why did he ban it? Because the person the Christians were praying to spelled out the name Jesus Christ. So if you want to talk about there being a million different Jesus Christ, go ahead. The only one Rabbi Akiva was so threatened by was the one that the earliest Christians believed was a man, was God incarnate, worshipped as God incarnate. Anywhere you look, anywhere, Ken will continue to tell you there is no proof of this, there is no proof of that. What do you want? Do you want video? We don't have video. There is histor more historical documentation for Christ than there is for Josephus. <clears throat> Ken went into the Gospel of Mark, and um, he, he told me, why, why don't you talk about the Gospel of Mark? We can talk about it. <laughs> we can talk about it all day and night. And you won't find an argument that will favor what you believe. In that book, whether you want to believe it was written by an eyewitness or not, in that book we are told, we're told about a historical figure that walked, that roamed the earth, not any little figure. But we're told about a figure that the earliest people believed to have been God incarnate. Again, today's debate was not about the deity. But we can show that all of these people connected the existence of Christ with the fact that their particular Christ, our particular Christ, how was he different? He was different because he came, was born of a virgin, died, resurrected. He rose again. He proved that he was God incarnate. We're told over and over well, why does Justin Martyr not talk about Paul? He doesn't talk about Paul because he's arguing. He's arguing for his Messiah. And he's sticking particularly to the text of the Jews viewed as historical. And I will end my closing the way I ended my opening. I submit to the audience, listen, that Jesus Christ did exist. He does exist. And he will forever exist. He is not a myth. Thank you very much. Thank you, William. Uh, Ken Humphreys, you have your seven minutes for your closing statement, and you can begin at any time. Okay. Well, thank you. Thank you. And, and thank you, William. I've enjoyed this uh, debate. It's uh, uh, been it, it, spirited, I'd say, uh, but good-natured. And yes, you can be my friend forever. I, I'm, I'm quite happy with that. In fact, I do have Catholic friends, and uh, it's quite interesting. They, they, they don't engage me in debate, but they are my friends, and uh, uh, that says a lot. Um, yeah, William seems to be pleased that I, uh, that I conceded that... Paul may indeed have spoke of Christ may, performing miracles through him. I mean, I, 
I think that is really try, an attempt to d- delude people. When we are speaking of miracles, we are mainly speaking of the miracles known to everyone, every child even, you know, of, of, of walking on water and curing the sick and, um, and the rest of it, which Jesus himself performed. And there, there surely should have been an occasion in Paul's voluminous uh, evidence in his epistle, so-called, uh, of some of the miracles to make his point. But he doesn't. And no more than he mentions Mary or Joseph or, or Nazareth or, or all kinds of building blocks that make up the Jesus story. And those building blocks, they begin with Mark, and he starts with a few of those building blocks, and the other authors add to them. And so by the, by the mid-second century, we've certainly got some sort of comprehensive story coming together. Now, William has argued um, strongly that somehow they all believed in Christ. Well, I would put it to you, if I said to you I believed in Christ, would you know what I meant by that? Would you know what implication I had by that? Would you think I, I, I endorsed the whole of Christianity by that? Of course not. And similarly, just because people trotted out the word Lord Christ, Jesus Christ, Christ Almighty, it doesn't imply anything about an historical character for whom we can find no evidence, which is amazing considering you know, uh, evangelicals and and, and, and de- Various Christians of various stripes have been searching for for 200 years at least in the Holy Land, and they, they find nothing. They, they find that the evidence for Jesus, whether it's in Nazareth or any other of the towns, they just not, not. It's not there. It's, there's no nothing to back it up. Yes, the Israeli government goes to a great deal of trouble to fabricate in the way that they've fabricated a village in Nazareth. So, yes, you could go there and you'll see an authentic-looking village, except that it's completely fabricated. And that's true of both in detail and in depth and for a long while in the history of Christianity. And I don't think that William would really dispute with me the fact that fabrication and, and forgery is part of the part and parcel of, of the Christian message, that, 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 that where they have needed false documents, they had provided false documents, whether to enhance a claim for, for control of the Western Empire or any other part of their story. Fabrication and fraud is in the lifeblood of Christianity. It's just the way it is. Now, Christianity, of course, gives strength to a lot of people. It gives solace. It gives comfort. It performs a social role. That is why it's so successful. That's why it clings on. I mentioned my friends who are Catholic. What do they enjoy about the church? They enjoy the church as an institution. They enjoy going to its ceremonies. They enjoy going to its quiz nights and its bingo sessions it provides something for them it doesn't substantiate anything at all about jesus as an historical person and that's the person that i've been concerned with for almost 20 years and you know i do not find evidence of this person i find evidence of fraud now so be it. I didn't expect that, that William and I would uh, agree for an instant, and I'm sure we could uh, uh, discuss this ad, ad infinitum. But he is a committed Catholic. I am not, and uh, I, I have no. I, if, if I found evidence of Jesus, I'd be pleased to say, at last, at last, there's a bit of evidence here for Jesus. But it never happens. It never happens, even if they try very hard just before Christmas, as a rule, to invent a bit of evidence. But so be it. Um, I've enjoyed the debate. It, 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 I always enjoy debating Jesus because it's, a, it's an engaging subject as far as I'm concerned. It's a human folly. It's a weakness of humanity. And I don't really know what the audience for this debate would be, but I would imagine it will mainly be Catholics, mainly be Christians, and they will stick to the, the same opinion they had before. But so be it. That is, that, that is you, you, know, you wouldn't expect any, anything other than that. But I'm, I'm pleased to have had the opportunity to, to, to add this debate and uh, perhaps on another occasion we'll, we'll consider some other aspects of it. So I thank you both um, for hosting me and uh, uh, I wish you a Merry Christmas. <laughs> thank you, Ken. And you know what? That was going to be one of my first questions too. Jesus 
Memphis is to celebrate Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I have an atheist friend. He said, uh, uh, what he does for Christmas is he likes his, he likes his, uh, was his eggnog spiked a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Do you celebrate, Ken? Do you? <laughs> Um, Sorry? Uh, let, Do you celebrate Christmas, let me, remind, let me remind everybody about the, the information about your website and your publication real quick, and then we'll we'll go on and take some questions. I just want to remind everyone that uh, Ken Humphreys has a website. It's www.jesusneverexisted.com, and he has a YouTube channel called youtube.com backslash Jesus Never Existed. And so uh, you can uh, find more information about Ken and uh, other debates that he's had and other publications and information that he may have on the Mississippi position. Um, with that being said, uh, we're going to go to the to the callers. And uh, as always, I would callers, uh, first of all, we don't have much time. We have, I think, 18 minutes. So um, the number is 347 934 Zero three seven nine. That's three four seven nine three four zero three seven nine. And then press one, and we'll take your comments or questions to either Ken or William. And if and if, and if you don't act fast enough, then I'm going to have to jump the gun and, and ask my own uh, curiosities and let them go. Uh, usually, a few people will will pop on. So three four seven nine three four zero three seven nine. If you have any questions for either of the debate candidates. Um, in the meantime, until I see someone press one, and I will gladly interrupt myself, I will ask um, uh, Ken a question, uh, and um, mm-hmm. it has to uh, it has to do with um, uh, I think that you mentioned uh, oh Ignatius existing um, because I, I think somewhere in the debate you actually questioned the the validity of Ignatius as a as a person. I, is it? Is it? I mean, uh, I, I know that a lot of historians actually do uh, find that his uh, longer receptions to be spurious and his shorter receptions to be actually uh, more authentic. Uh, but I've never heard someone actually question the validity of Ignatius. But I, I, I won't put that question to the, on on the shelf because somebody just popped on. All right, eight three zero. You're on the air. That's right. Hi, I have a question for um, Ken and William, and I just want to know, is there any evidence for Jesus and for Nazareth? You, you, you want me to take that first, Ken, or you want to get that first? Uh, well, I, I'll happily answer, answer that. If, 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 if you seem to, is there any evidence for Jesus? Is there any evidence for Nazareth, if I heard you correctly? Which, yes. I mean, yes. well, for... For two hours, we've been discussing whether the, the Jesus <laughs> bit is true. Evi- evidence for Nazareth. Now, that is an interesting in, 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 in point, you know, because uh, I'd say essentially, no, there isn't. There is no evidence for, for Nazareth. Uh, and uh, more than that, I'd say all of the locations of, of, of Jesus's performances are questionable. They're obscure. They're, they're unknown. And what worries me mainly about the, 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 the issue is that the major cities of Galilee, and bear in mind, Galilee was a small place and a city then was a pretty small town anyway, but even the major cities were never mentioned. So Jesus manages to avoid all the real places and then perform some miracle in the, in the, 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 the doubtful places. So I'd say no, there is no evidence for Nazareth. And it's interesting that each uh, each Christmas we've had the Jesus bathhouse produced. We've uh, had uh, you know different the different things have been claimed, and they're always introduced as the first evidence for Jesus, simply because all the other ones have proved false. Yeah, that's a really good question. Now, let me take my stab at it. Uh, yeah, I do think there is a, a lot of evidence for uh, for Christ having existed, Jesus Christ, the one that we're talking about. Um, if, if you want to stick to something really, really ancient and do a lot of digging into it, I would recommend you go to um, the Carmen Christie. Look that up. Do research on that. Um, that is evidence in and of itself of an ancient record and is testimony to the existence of a person named Jesus Christ. Um, uh, uh, talking about Nazareth, that, that is a really good um, 
uh, a really good point brought up there. Um, uh, I do believe Nazareth existed. Uh, I think there is a, a mountain of evidence. Again, uh, Ken and myself are not archaeologists, but if we do hearken to um, people that are experts in that field, uh, we will find that there are coins that existed that have been found. There's tombs. Uh, what else is there? I know. I, I believe there's pottery as well. Um, I think the evidence is overwhelming. And again, um, uh, perhaps not on the same topic, but uh, I do wholeheartedly embrace uh, that I would love to continue dialoguing with Ken, and perhaps we date, we would debate uh, other topics. But in regards to this particular topic, and particularly on uh, Nazareth, uh, I, I think that ev all the evidence does point to it as having indeed existed. Uh, perhaps that would be, uh, I guess, not a very interesting debate for another time, a whole debate just on Nazareth. But, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I think, uh, I, I do think historically, uh, I think we can prove it existed. The problem is, most of Nazareth got created as a result of the conversion of the Roman Empire four centuries later. So that's when we get Nazareth. But before that, it's very questionable. And, and archaeologists are, are sort of amenar over whether there was a village of perhaps 20, 20 families or maybe not a village, because uh, that's how slim the evidence is for anything on Nazareth. If, if, if I could add to that, I think. The Gospels say that Nazareth was a village of no report. You know, it was uh, yeah. like, uh, why would the Messiah come out of Nazareth? I mean, that place is it's, it's nothing burger. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, if, if there's any evidence lacking, I think the Gospels themselves give you a little credulity to the fact that it would be lacking because it was a village of nothing burger. So, um, uh, but I, I, I I, I guess uh, that's something for archaeologists. Um, if anybody has any other questions, just press one. I do want to uh, go on with the question I had then was um, about the existence of Ignatius. Uh, uh, why would why would you question the existence of Ignatius? And if, 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 if not if, if Ignatius, then why not also Clemente or Justin Martyr or or any of about the, any of the patristics? Why why should we believe any of them really existed then? Well, you see, where, where my skepticism is fed, fed uh, uh, material is when you look at Ignatius, and I, I looked at the Ignatius, and I, I you know, wanted to find a, a, a character there. And what do we find? Well, first of all, we've discovered, like, well, I think it's he's bishop for 40 years. That's the first thing, right? It's, it's one of those sort of uh, accolades that, you know, several uh, early characters. They're always bishop for 40 years. Then we know nothing at all about his bishopric for 40 years. But we'll, we learn a lot about his martyrdom, right? So this glorious end, end of story business comes in, that is martyrdom. And then what sort of martyrdom does he have? He isn't just taken off to the local arena or town and executed. He gets ceremonial tour hello okay yeah we're losing are you still there? there there we go i can hear him a lot better now yeah i hear okay. better now okay and, and it, it, it perambulates through through Asia, um visiting all parts Yes, hello, Ken. Yes. You're breaking up really yeah, I think fast. His, I think, yeah, I think his phone might be might be on low battery. It's breaking up a lot. Okay. Are, are you able to hear me? Are you able to hear me clearly? I think we're losing. Are, are you able to hear me? Yeah, it's really dying. Are you able to hear me? Hear me? Uh, are you able to hear me? My line. Uh. Oh. I can hear you, but you obviously can't hear me. Yeah, I think we can hear a little better there. Okay. Um, there we go. I can hear clearly now. Yeah, now I hear you. Ah, well. 
There we go. Yeah, I think the, the program had a little bit of uh, uh, technical difficulties there. Okay. Well, I hope you heard my diatribe on, on, on St. Uh, Ignatius. But, you know, it, it, it's a curious album, put it that way. And then, and then of course, I, I, if you look at the writings of Ignatius, um, well, why do you have so many returns? You know, the, 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 um, short versions, yeah. mid versions, longer yeah. versions, yeah. over 150 years. I mean, this doesn't seem to add up to a real person. Okay. I guess, I mean, maybe maybe you and William might want to d- d- debate that on a future debate on the validity of I would of love to debate Ignatius. Yeah. Of Ignatius. Definitely. Yeah. Uh, I mean, <laughs> Uh, and th- I think there's a lot there's a lot of areas for debate um, on the uh, mysticist agenda because I know also the mysticists also I think may deny even the existence of the apostles if I'm not correct I don't know if Ken does um, I think we could, we could usefully debate all I mean by all I mean perhaps six or seven early witnesses that the church forever produces to, des- to, to, to justify their claims. We could discuss all half a dozen of them, because I think that there's, there's questions about them all. Yeah, that, that's, that's definitely some, some, some room for topics, for other topics for debate. Um, I, I do think that you guys did a great, great job with this debate. And uh, I, I think since Ken's phone is kind of dying, I'm not sure, but I, I really want to be able to hear him clearly. Um, uh, maybe we should probably close right here. <laughs> yeah, because I do think it's dying out. Yeah. Yeah. We only we only have. A, 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 uh, yeah. So uh, once again, I just want to uh, just uh, everyone. I'm go- I'm going to um, put up the. Uh, I have to set up this debate at the last minute because. For some reason, it was going awkward with the technical difficulties. So I'm going to um, put up all their information again on this. You know, right now, it's just going to say BTR debate, but I'm going to go ahead and edit it as soon as the program is over so that if you want to download the podcast, um, I would say wait about 20 minutes, and, and I'll, I'll have it all edited up and cleaned up for you guys. So um, without further ado, I just uh, thank you both for this debate um, next week at 1 o'clock Eastern time we will have a rebroadcast I really don't know yet which rebroadcast I'm going to put up but I, it might be something on uh, possibly on the holidays you know we had, had some some issues on the holidays and so we're getting close to I think Advent begins this week so I'll, I'll put up something uh, maybe uh, maybe I'll put up I'll put up the interview I had with uh, Professor William Ty. So that, that's a good that's a good uh, broadcast to, to pull out of the archives uh, that hasn't been heard in quite a long time. William Ty uh, wrote Calculating Christmas and he brought out information that um, really has uh, kind of been dormant. So, I mean, just Google Calculating Christmas and I think you'll see it. So without further ado, I just uh, thank you, everyone. Have a great weekend. Have a happy Thanksgiving for those of us here in America and and uh, I don't know what they do in the UK <laughs> for Thanksgiving, <laughs> but uh, you know, just uh, I guess enjoy your turkey meals or, or whatever it is that you're going to eat this this coming up week. God bless everyone. See you next week at one o'clock Eastern Time on Healing X Outreach. Bye bye.